Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Crown Ridge Tiger Sanctuary. My name's John, I'm going to be your virtual tour guide today. Um, first, before we get started, a little bit about our facility. Um, we are a 501c3 nonprofit rescue facility for big cats. Um, and we are also uh, GFAS verified, as well as a founding member of the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance. Um, and essentially what we do is, as a true sanctuary, um, we rescue big cats that are being neglected, abused, mistreated, or unwanted, and we bring them here and provide a permanent lifelong home for them. Um, so that means we don't buy, sell, trade, or breed um, here. We simply rescue. So today I'm going to take you on a bit of a tour of our facility where we can go meet our big cat residents. Um, and so let's get started. Hey buddy. Boy. So this is Izzy. Izzy is our one male tiger. And as you can hear, he can be vocal sometimes. Um, it's typically in the mornings like this when he's the most vocal um, because he wants attention and he wants us to do stuff with him. Um, we don't ever go in with our cats. Um, we don't ever have any physical contact with them because they are still wild animals and they're extremely dangerous. So it's safest for them and for us to always have a fence between us. But we still can't interact with them. So Izzy here, he likes to um, run with us. So we'll run um, when we're out here in the alleyway and he's inside his enclosure we'll run with him um, and he likes to kind of chase us um, and that gives him some exercise and he does enjoy it. Um, so Izzy here is predominantly a Siberian tiger um, and so you can kind of see um, if you look at his coat there that he his stripes are relatively thin um, they kind of make straight lines going down his body and they're not quite as dark black as um, you'll see on Thor and Gracie since they're predominantly Bengal tigers. So as a Siberian tiger Izzy would be native to northern Russia, northern China where it does tend to be cold most of the time um, and so he does put on a heavy winter coat which right now he is in the process of shedding so you can kind of see he's looking a little bit shaggy and scraggly right now. He's got a lot of hair that he's shedding off. So he's just started to shed his winter coat. Um, and he will continue to shed through about the end of May and then he'll pretty much have his, his summer coat. Hi buddy. So as a Siberian, Izzy does absolutely love the cold. Um, he loves playing in the snow. He loves um, when it is actually cold out, he doesn't mind those cold temperatures at all. Um, in the winter, they do have access to an indoor holding area um, each night and during the day um, where we have uh, heaters. So if they want to go and warm up inside, they can. Um, but typically, especially is, he likes to stay outside. Um, and we also do, even outside, we have uh, mulch piles for him to lay in and mulch beds so that it kind of keeps him up off the ground and helps keep him warm. Um, but Izzy doesn't really care. <clears throat> he so we rescued Izzy here when he was only about six months old. Um, so he was rescued from a cub petting operation near Chicago, Illinois, where basically he was used as a photo prop for cub petting so people could pay to hold him, take pictures with him. Um, and this is really bad for the cubs. They're forced to be handled all day. They're forced to be awake all day. Um, they're taken away from their mother basically at birth. Um, and then once they reach about two to three months old, they're too big and too dangerous to be handled anymore. Um, and most of those facilities don't have the space or really a desire for adult tigers. Um, and so they will basically just get rid of them any way they can, whether that's selling them, trading them, 
or in some cases even euthanizing them. Um, so Izzy was actually set to be euthanized, but luckily we were able to step in and bring him here. So he has been here since he was only six months old. Uh, so when he first arrived, he weighed about 75 pounds, and now he weighs just under 500 pounds. So a little bit of a difference. Um, um, Izzy is one of our youngest tigers. Uh, he is 13 years old, uh, which again for tigers is kind of uh, middle age. Um, so he's still much younger than our girls who we'll see later. Uh, but like all tigers, Izzy spends most of his day lounging around. So you can see he's up on his platform. Um, in his yard. This is one of his favorite spots to lay. Um, especially on these sunny days, you can see he's kind of in the shade there. He's a little bit in the sun. I'm guessing he's going to move as it warms up today. Um, but Izzy is our most active, although he's definitely not showing that right now. Um, so he tends to really like to play with his enrichment. Um, and we do enrichment for a variety of reasons, but mainly it kind of helps these guys um, stay physically active, keep them mentally and physically stimulated, um, so it helps, helps keep them healthy. Um, because without enrichment, um, these guys aren't made for captivity, so they can start showing those stereotypical behaviors like pacing, over grooming, um, things like that. Um, and that's not good for their physical body or their, their mental state. Um, so we do a lot of different types of enrichment to keep these guys active and interested. Um, Izzy's favorite is probably anything related to his um, pool or sense. Uh, so these guys have a really good sense of smell. Um, and Izzy's favorite scents are ginger, um, cloves, cinnamon, uh, kind of anything you would use to, in baking during the holidays, uh, Izzy likes it. Um, so when they have a scent that they like, they'll kind of roll around, rub in it, um, get it all over themselves. Um, so that's a good way that we can keep them uh, stimulated. Um, then Izzy also really does like his pool. Um, so each of the yards do have a pool, so his pool is right over there. Um, and you can see he has a barrel in his pool right now. Um, as well as uh, a little pool ball on over top of it. Um, so Izzy will bring those barrels into his pool. Um, you can see the barrel right there. So they usually start outside of his pool and then he brings them into the pool. Um, and then you can also see that pill ball there and all those scratch marks. Um, those are pretty much all from Izzy. Um, so Izzy will get in his pool and then he'll kind of jump up and bat that around. Um, you can see the pool has a lot of pollen in it right now because we're right in the middle of spring. Um, but we do clean their pools out typically about once, once a week. Uh, and that's just one of the ways um, that they can kind of cool off during the summer. But you can see because it's kind of gets a little dirty, they also over here have um, a water bowl, so they always have access to fresh water um, aside from their pool. And then you can also see down at the bottom there, that building, um, you can see that door that's open. So that leads into his indoor area that he also has access to. Um, so it looks like he, he heard one of our keepers driving around, so he turned away from us. Um, but you can kind of see his coat now, um, like I've mentioned before. He's mostly a Siberian tiger, so you can really see a good look at his, his back and his coat there. So this is Thor. Thor is one of our two female tigers. And we have her and her sister Gracie, who we'll see next. So Thor here was res part of our first rescue. Um, we rescued her and her sister Gracie from a drive through zoo near Springfield, Missouri where they basically weren't being taken care of properly and the facility was shutting down. Um, so we rescued them, their two parents, and a lioness named Alexis. Um, at the time of rescue, Gracie and Thor were in pretty bad shape. Um, they weren't being fed properly and so they were both severely malnourished. Um, and 
basically they were only being fed about five to six pounds of meat a day for the both of them to share. Whereas now they are each getting nine pounds of meat a day. Um, and that's actually the lower end of their diet. They will, in the winter, they'll go up to about 11 or 12 pounds of meat a day. Um, so what they were getting wasn't enough for one of them, let alone two of them. Um, and so that did lead to some um, health issues for these guys. Um, as you can see, now they, uh, Thor is a very healthy weight, um, but she's still kind of a picky eater. Um, she'll eat pretty much any type of meat, but she can be picky about like how she eats it or which type she eats first. Um, so she takes a little more work in the morning to get to eat because um, you got to kind of find what she feels like eating that day. Um, and that <clears throat> very much goes along with her general attitude. Um, she's a pretty independent cat. Uh, she kind of does her own thing, doesn't necessarily care what we want her to do. Um, if she doesn't want to do it, she's not going to do it. And she's much more independent and stubborn than most of our other cats. Um, but we allow her to do that because these guys here, we just want them to relax and kind of do what they want. We never force them to do anything if they don't want to. Um, you can see she's getting up a little bit. Um, so Thor and Gracie... Um, they are our oldest cats, so Thor here is 17 years old, which for a tiger is considered elderly. Uh, in the wild, these guys would only live about 10 to 15 years, uh, but here in captivity, especially in a sanctuary setting, um, they can live 20, even up to 25 years, With um, since we provide them with good medical care, um, they don't have, you know, the stresses that they would have in the wild, um, and obviously we feed them every day so they don't have to worry about hunting or things like that. So Thor is predominantly a Bengal tiger, um, so you can get a really good look at her stripes there. <laughs> of course, she doesn't want to cooperate and hold still for me now. Uh, so Bengal tigers would be native to India where they don't really have a winter like we do here. So this is what Thor looks like year round. Um, and if you look at her stripes, you can see that they're a pretty dark black. Um, and just gonna show off a little bit. This is her hammock that she really enjoys. So if you look at her stripes, you'll see that they're pretty dark um, black. They're pretty thick and they kind of make little ovals, um, especially like in her midsection where they start together, they break apart, and then they come back together. Um, that's indicative of a Bengal tiger. Um, and so that's kind of how we can tell that Thor's probably a little bit more Bengal than the other subspecies. But since she was born and bred in captivity, she is a bit of a mix. Um, what she's laying in right now is her fire hose hammock. Um, this is definitely one of her favorite places to lay. Um, she absolutely loves this. Um, most likely, she's going to be here for probably the rest of the day now. Um, typically, what these guys will do is they, um, in the morning, we bring them inside to their indoor enclosures, um, and that's where uh, we feed them their medications, their morning breakfast kind of stuff, um, and then while they're locked in there, we come out into their outdoor enclosures and uh, clean them, clean the pools, pick up after these guys, put out new enrichment, stuff like that. Um, and then once we're done, we give them back access to their outdoor area. Um, and typically, like kind of what Thor did this morning, uh, she'll kind of walk around, check things out, you know, see if we've moved anything, see if we have put any enrichment in there, um, smell what we did, and then kind of find a place to lay, lay down, and that's probably where she's going to spend the rest of the day. Um, so, you know, these guys are cats, so they do sleep most of the day. So they probably sleep here about 12 to 14 hours a day. Um, and so most likely, this is where Thor is going to be for the remainder of the day. 
And if you look close there, you can see that Thor does have really long whiskers. Um, she has some of the longest whiskers out of all of our cats. Um, and those whiskers are used to kind of help them feel the world around them um, and allow them to sense things better at night, um, in the dark, and things like that. Uh, so they are very vital for, their, for when they're hunting and stuff like that. <clears throat> One more thing for Thor here, if I can see it. Um, so all tigers do have unique stripes. Um, they're kind of like our fingerprint. Um, and one of Thor's unique stripes is that she has like a little heart-shaped stripe um, on her back hip. So if you kind of look right there, you can see that stripe um, right in the middle there. That's when she's standing up, it kind of looks like a heart. Um, so that helps us tell the girls apart because they are both pretty close to the same size. Um, and that's what people in the like scientists and stuff in the wild will use to identify tigers um, because again no two tigers will have the same stripes um, and those stripes do go down to their skin so even if you shave a tiger's fur off um, they'll still have those stripes um, <clears throat> so that's pretty much everything about Thor I think now we will move on and go see what her sister Gracie is up to. So this is Gracie. Gracie is one of our two females um, and she is Thor's sister. So like Thor she was rescued from exotic animal paradise um, and she still does carry a few more scars with her and you can see one of them um, right now. If you look at her eyes, you'll see that they're kind of a cloudy white color. Um, so when Gracie was a cub, she had a condition called entropion, which is basically when her eyelids were kind of folded over so that every time she would blink, her eyelashes would scratch her eye. And because she wasn't getting proper vet care, um, scar tissue built up. So by the time they did correct it, it was basically too late. Um, so Gracie is um, about 90 to 95% blind, but luckily um, the condition has been corrected so it's not getting any worse and it doesn't bother her or cause her any pain or discomfort, um, but she's never going to regain that sight. Um, luckily, she since she has been that way pretty much her whole life, she has gotten used to it, she's acclimated to it, and so if you didn't see her eyes, you really wouldn't notice any difference. Um, as you can see, she can get up on her platforms. Um, she gets around the yards just fine. She plays with enrichment, she finds her food. Um, again, when her and Thor are together, uh, Gracie will play with Thor, she'll chase Thor around. Um, so there's not really anything that the other cats do that Gracie can't do. Um, she just tends to uh, walk a little bit slower and she'll usually lift her paws up a little bit higher to kind of feel her way around. But um, she's really good. She knows where everything is in the yards and so she copes with it extremely well. So personality wise, Gracie is kind of the sweetheart of the group. Um, she doesn't growl very often. She's pretty laid back. You know, most of the time She's relaxing, she'll chuff at us and say hi. Um, and the three we currently have, they all tend to get along pretty well. Um, but we've had uh, tigers in the past where one, his name was Suvarna, um, and Thor and Izzy weren't a big fan of Suvarna, so if he was in the yard next to them, they would kind of growl um, or avoid him. Whereas Gracie, she was always super sweet um, and would chuff and kind of rub along the fence. Um, so we never put them in with each other, but they still do interact a little bit through the fence. Um, again, Gracie and Thor are the only ones that we ever put in the same enclosure since they're sisters and they kind of know each other. Um, but they still will kind of interact. And Gracie, out of all of the cats, is always the one that's um, the most laid back and will kind of chuff and be nice to everyone. Whereas some of the other cats, you know, they have days where they're not a huge fan of, of other, of the others. 
but as you can see, uh, this is what Gracie does most of the time. Um, like with all the cats, these guys do sleep a lot, and that's one of Gracie's favorite things to do. Um, so where she is right now is one of her favorite spots to lay. She really loves this um, fire hose hammock. Um, Gracie here is our smallest tiger. Um, so Izzy's the biggest at about 500 pounds. And Gracie here is the smallest at right about 275 pounds. Um, her sister Thor weighs just a little bit more than Gracie does. Um, and part of that is because of, like I mentioned with Thor, these guys weren't being fed enough when they were, um, before we rescued them. So because that was when they were kind of growing and developing, it did stunt their growth a little bit. Um, so typically they would be more um, closer to like 300, 350. Uh, so they're just a little bit smaller than they would normally be. Um, but at 17 years old, Gracie's not gonna grow anymore. Um, she's pretty much the size she's gonna be. So another form of enrichment that we do with these guys is training. Um, so it's still always through a fence um, and it's only positive reinforcement. So we never punish them or withhold food or anything like that. Um, we just reward them when they do the behaviors that we ask them to do. And um, it's not for shows or anything like that, but to help with vet care. So again, we don't go in with these guys. So um, unlike, you know, your dog or cat at home where if they get sick or something seems to be wrong with them, you can just kind of pick them up and look at them or take them to the vet. Um, we can't do that here with these guys. Uh, so we rely on uh, training with them to, so that they can do a few behaviors so we can take a look at them. Um, so for example, we train them how to open their mouth so that we can look at their teeth. Um, we train them how to stand up so they can kind of show us their paws um, and different behaviors like that to just make um, diagnosis and medical care just a little bit easier. So some people, when you guys see these guys and they're relaxing and they look nice and cuddly, um, might be mistaken thinking that they would make good pets or they'd be kind of cool to have as a pet. Um, but tigers do not make good pets. Um, they are wild animals. They're not domesticated. Um, and so even like Gracie here, we, um, she knows us, she's used to us. She's been born and raised in captivity, um, but she is still a dangerous animal. So um, these guys do not belong in people's houses. Um, and unfortunately in the US, there's several states where it is actually legal to own a tiger as a pet. Um, and we are working to um, end that by trying to get the Big Cat Public Safety Act passed. Um, so it's a federal law that we're working to get passed that would make it illegal to own tigers as pets, um, as well as to do things like cub petting, like from where Izzy came from. Um, so that is a piece of legislation that we're working really hard to get passed. So um, if you want more information about that, you can always check out our website. Um, but it's really important if you really want to help uh, tigers that are, and other big cats that are in captivity um, and being abused and neglected, uh, the Big Cat Public Safety Act is hands down the best way um, to help them. And Gracie, looks like Gracie agrees with me. All right, big girl. Oh, big stretch. Wanna come over and say hi? So as you can see, Gracie gets around just fine. Um, you wouldn't really notice a difference between her and Thor. It looks like the hammock was in the sun a little bit too much, so I think Gracie's gonna make her way down into the shade a little bit more. Looks like she found a better spot under the platform. It's a little bit cooler down here. So that's the end of our tour. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys learned something and took something away from that. Um, 
If you guys want more videos and pictures and things like that, be sure to follow us on all of the social media platforms, um, including here on YouTube. And uh, we will see you guys next time.